One might say General Grievous had a reputation for being a terrible boss and a merciless killer, entirely bereft of compassion. He gave his enemies no quarter, especially the Jedi, whom he despised. But the Jedi's clone soldiers didn't receive the same degree of burning hatred. On the contrary, he maintained a degree of respect for the clones, and though he still didn't hesitate to kill them in brutal ways, he was usually sure to give them a warrior's death. To understand this strange aspect of the General's personality, we need to dive deep into Grievous's past, which is what we'll be doing today. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Consider the following passages from the novel Labyrinth of Evil, set shortly after the Battle of Katanamoria. Protected by two squadrons of Trade Federation Vulture fighters, Newt Gunray's organic-looking shuttle cut a blazing trail through the void of deep space, plasma bolts from a dozen Republic V-Wings nipping at its upraised tail. To any other spectator, it might appear that the Viceroy was risking his wattled neck, but Grievous knew better. Gunray's vessel was in no real peril. Outnumbered by better than two to one and flying headlong into the vanguard vessels of the Confederacy fleet, it was the pilots of the Republic starfighters who were risking their necks. At another time, Grievous might have applauded their bravery by allowing them to escape with their lives. But Gunray's transparent attempts at pretense had exposed the fleet to surveillance, and now the Republic pilots would have to die. Instead of killing the pilots outright though, Grievous chooses to have his gunners destroy their hyperdrive rings and then take out a full squadron of Gunray's escort, giving them a bit of an easier time. He even allows them to score a few hits before sending out Tri-Fighters to rescue the Viceroy, and to quote the next passage, alerted to the approaching Tri-Droids, the Republic pilots had sense enough to realize that they were severely outnumbered. Disengaging from the last of the Vulture fighters, they began to make for free space. But the two Starfighters were slower than the rest to disengage. Calling for magnification of the shuttle pursuit, Grievous saw that the stragglers were newly minted ARC 170s, co-piloted crafts equipped with powerful laser cannons at the tips of their outstretched wings and multiple torpedo launchers. He was eager to see what they were capable of. What impressed Grievous was how quickly the pilots came to each other's assistance. Combat camaraderie hadn't been bred into them by the Kaminoan cloners or been something that they'd learned from the Jedi. It had come from the Mandalorian bounty hunter. Fett would have denied it, of course, would have insisted that he was out only for himself. But that was not the way of his warrior brethren, and that was not the way of the clone pilots now, exaggerating the value of each life as if the clones were uncontrived humans. Grievous eventually killed off these clones and had Gunray escorted to safety, but the respect and curiosity he harbors for these clones is fascinating. To understand what he saw in them, we need to consider the history of the General himself. Well over a decade before the Clone Wars, the being who would later be known as Grievous was born on the remote Outer Rim planet, Kaylee, a jungle hothouse with few natural resources and a larger population than it could feed. The native reptilian Kalish were a fierce warrior race, primitive by galactic standards and fervently ferocious. In Grievous's time, they were at war with the Hook, an insectoid species that wanted to conquer Kaylee and take its people as slaves. Young Grievous devoted himself to total war against the invaders. He became a mighty warlord who succeeded in uniting the Kalish under a single banner. Together with the Izvoshra, a cadre of elite warriors that fought by his side, Grievous fought the invaders tooth and nail, eventually driving them from Kaylee through sacrifice and struggle. But that wasn't enough for the young warlord. Grievous and his followers gave chase, reverse engineering Hook starships and tracking the insects back to their colonies, which they raised one by one. Eventually, they drove the Hook all the way back to their homeworld, which was when the Republic decided to intervene. Fashionably late, as always. While Grievous was avenging his people on the Hook colonies, the Hook had appealed to the Galactic Senate for aid claiming that the Kalish had attacked unprovoked and just wanted to steal their colony's resources. Without getting the Kalish's side of things, the Senate sided with the Hook, and they sent the Jedi to intervene. 
The Jedi arrested Grievous and his followers and treated them like the aggressors, forcibly disarming them and sending them back to Kaylee. In retaliation, the Republic imposed punishing sanctions on the already destitute world, which led to widespread famine. It was these sanctions that ultimately forced Grievous to ally with the intergalactic banking clan so that his people could get some measure of relief. Obviously, this incident was why Grievous hated the Jedi so much, but it also played a major role in defining what sort of wartime conduct he considered worthy of respect. During the Hook War, the Hook and the Kalish matched each other for brutality. Both the slavers and their would-be slaves showed no mercy to one another and would mutilate each other on the battlefield. The Hook War was a total bloodbath and both sides would have happily wiped the other out if given the chance. That was a large part of why Grievous was so ruthless during the Clone Wars. It was the environment he had grown up in and it was all he had ever known. Grievous saw nothing wrong with this approach to war, but what had enraged him was how the Hook had ended it. The honourable thing for them to have done in his mind would have been to surrender, to flee to another system or to fight to the death. But instead, they had run crying to the Republic, dodging the consequences of their actions by begging a stronger power to save them. Grievous hated this unwillingness to finish the fight, which is the first hint toward why he respected clones more than his other adversaries. To Grievous, the clones of the Grand Army of the Republic had a warrior spirit that other enemies lacked. They understood war and they fought with a tenacity that must have reminded Grievous of the warriors he had fought beside in his youth. They poured everything into the fight and they were willing to do what needed to be done to ensure victory, up to and including sacrificing themselves, their allies, or even civilians. Furthermore, unlike the battle droids Grievous so deeply loathed, the clones' ferocity was neither blind nor suicidal. They believed in their cause even if they didn't fully understand it, but they weren't willing to just toss themselves into the meat grinder. They understood and accepted sacrifice, but they were also smart enough to retreat when need be. Grievous, of course, also recognized the value of a good retreat, and in any event, he appreciated that the clones weren't mindless drones. In this respect, Grievous understood the clones better than a great many loyalists. Many supporters of the Republic saw the clones as little more than mindless droids, but Grievous knew better. Perhaps because he was also seen as a living droid by many of his allies, something he deeply resented. But on top of that, what impressed Grievous was the clones' camaraderie, which he correctly surmised as being an innate trait rather than something they had been taught. That was something he had always found lacking in his droid servants, something he hadn't seen since his days as the champion of Kaylee. During the Hook War, he and his people had had to stick together. Either they did, or they were enslaved or killed. The Kalish had been fighting to save each other and to avenge their beloved dead, and while the Hook Wars turned Grievous into a heartless killing machine, he still retained an aspect of that sense of loyalty. Indeed, that loyalty was ultimately what led to his transformation into a cyborg. The shuttle crash that had changed his life forever happened while Grievous was setting out to slaughter a group of Hook colonists for desecrating Kalish graves on a far-flung battlefield. Droids knew nothing of Brotherhood, and as cold and droid-like as he himself was, that was something Grievous resented. He missed the loyalty of his people, which was why he arrayed his Magna Guard bodyguards in the cloaks of his beloved Izvoshra, who had perished in the shuttle crash that destroyed his original body. In the loyalty the clones of the GAR showed each other, Grievous saw his own people, and even as he slaughtered them by the thousands, he couldn't help but respect his tenacious opponents. But that's just our analysis, and we'd like to hear yours. Do you think we're reading too much into this, or are we onto something here? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. As always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.